Hey guys, Razorblade Apple Films here. Today we're going to be doing a review on my first automatic knife, the Boker Kalashnikov. So, going over the design real fast, I'm going to keep this kind of short and sweet. Uh, mainly because, you know, uh, I think this is a very high quality knife. There's nothing wrong with it, but just having it and feeling it in hand and everything, I, I don't know, I just don't really like it that much. And I know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to keep it. It's not going to be one of those knives that I really like, so... Thought, why not just sell it now while it's still in pretty good condition? <laughs> so, uh, going over the design real fast, it is an automatic knife. Pretty sure it has a plunge lock. Uh, so, you know, you can see it right in there. Disengage the blade. So, to, you know, work that, obviously, there's no safety. You know, nothing on there like a Benchmade knife. Some of them have one on the top or right here. Uh, this one doesn't have a safety. It is very recessed into there. Uh, into the handle, like, you know, the button doesn't stick out much. Uh, I've been carrying this for like two weeks, maybe three weeks. Haven't had a problem with it deploying in my pocket. It's never done that. So, but once you do, you know, once you get to it, it's, uh, it comes out really easily and it's not a problem to get to it. Now, when I first got it, actually, it was a bit sticky. Uh, the lock did kind of, you know, kind of felt scratchy and felt kind of hard to get to. But it's like smoothed up after a while. You know, and now it's like really easy to do. Also, I couldn't close it one-handed uh, when I first got it. I knew like when I got the knife, you know, it's an automatic. It's not really meant to be closed with one hand. You know, it's way easier and safer to do that. You know, just press it down and, you know, close it with the other hand. But, uh, you know, one of the pros of having an automatic knife is, you know, if you're doing something with one hand, you can just you know, flick your knife out really easily cut it and then put it away but it did smooth up uh, considerably so now it's very easy to close with one hand I can't do it with my left hand just because of like you know how the buttons on the opposite side but it's pretty easy to close them with my uh, right hand feels pretty much just like a spring assisted knife uh, easy to deploy with my left hand though and in fact I can actually deploy it a little easier I think it's easier to press it with your index finger Now it's looking a little bouncy. Oop, scratch my table. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's looking uh, like it's kind of bouncing a bit. That's the first time I've actually noticed it doing that. Maybe it's just the way it shoots out on camera, but it's never failed to deploy. It's a rock solid lockup, like no blade play at all. Um, so yeah, uh, and that was actually one of the reasons, you know, I was, Looking at some of the uh, automatics, the CLA looks really nice. The Benchmade CLA, uh, Plain Edge, that one looked, you know, really classy, really slim and sleek, and you know, very simple. And but you know, I'm not going to shell out two hundred dollars on a knife that I'm not really sure if I'm going to keep. You know, some of the knives you're like, you know, that like appeals to you, and some knives, you know, it's like, oh, I want to try that out, and I kind of just wanted to try out an automatic knife. And for that reason, I think this roll. Uh, this knife fits that role really perfectly. I was also really going to get one of the uh, like kind of middle range knives, the uh, launch series by Kershaw's, but they did that kind of bouncing thing in all the videos. And there's people who said like that a lot of times uh, the lock doesn't, you know, it like doesn't engage the first time, and that was just kind of like a you know that turned me off from getting the knife. Even if a lot of people give good reviews, I just don't want the possibility of it not deploying well each time. Haven't had that uh, issue with this knife, and this knife's only like $40, though. I got mine on sale when Blade HQ was having a sale for like $27, so it's a steal of a knife. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think this is a Saber Ground blade, and it has AUSH steel. Uh, didn't come really sharp from factory. I'm used to, like, I guess, Spyderco knives or... A lot of knives come really sharp from the factory. This one didn't come that sharp at all. I had to spend like 15 minutes getting it sharp. And I don't know what it is about this specific knife, but AUS-8 on my uh, SE Zancudo, you know, I can strop it and, or not strop it, I can uh, swipe it on a Spyderco Sharp Maker, the fine stones, and I can get it like hair shaving sharp really easily in like a couple of minutes. This knife I had to take some time with, and it still just doesn't feel that sharp. I'm sure it is, it just doesn't feel that way, and I still haven't been able to get it to shave hair. So I don't know if it's an issue with the grind lines, or, uh, I mean, how it was ground. You know, I really don't know. 
but that's just my experience. It is cutting sharp and has a workable edge, but you know, it's just kind of hard to get like razor sharp. Uh, haven't had anything clank up against it in my pockets. I never carry anything in my knife pockets but my knives, and it's already got some little scuffs and scratches on it, specifically where the pocket clip is held. I don't know if you can see in there. I do like the pocket clip a lot. Uh, it doesn't have any damage to the edge yet, except for the very tip. And there's the blade thickness, by the way. A really thin, really thin blade. It's got this little swedge, so it makes it a lot thinner. Yeah, there's just a tiny, tiny bit of chip paint at the end. It doesn't even look bad on film. Uh, yeah, I love the pocket clip. Deep carry pocket clip. I always like that. And it's, you know, holds the, the knife in really well. It does wiggle a bit, though. You know, like, it feels a little cheap when you're doing that. Speaking of feeling cheap, <laughs> uh, I don't like the handle design. I, th I thought looking at it, you know, I don't really like that. You know, I knew I wouldn't really like that that much. But when I got it in hand, I was like, oh, well, you know, it's really heavy. I didn't expect, for some reason, I was expecting it to be, like, polymer handles. But it was a uh, metal aluminum handle, so that was kind of a plus. It makes it feel a little bit more robust. Uh, handle grooves, I don't like the look of, but functionally they work really well. Like, my hands fit them really well. Uh, you know, no problem with it. It's very comfortable. Jimping, yeah, it's semi-grippy, but it's not like paramilitary too grippy. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of functional, you know. It'll lock your hand in if you're carving or something. But... You know, this is kind of like a tactical knife, I'd definitely say. So if you had like a reverse grip, fits really well like that too. But if you were stabbing like an underhand, you know, jimping's not going to aid you really well. But, you know, I like to hold my knives like that anyway. So, yeah, something to take note of. Uh, definitely looks pretty sleek. This was my favorite looking one. Uh, I wish the black coating held up a little bit better. I know using it a lot more, that black coating wears off fairly easily um just from watching other people's reviews i'm probably not going to get it to that point uh, handle's pretty thick so it definitely feels good in hand but you're going to feel it in your pocket a little bit of jimping right here yeah it has these little like inserts right here and i don't really like the look of those uh, but, you know, you, you know pretty much, like, how you feel about the looks when you got it. And I was just kind of like, yeah, why not? You know, and make a good review, at least. Uh, so, knife feels very high quality uh, for what you're getting. You're only getting, like, a... I mean, you're only paying, like, $35 on average for this knife. And for that, I think it's a great deal. I think it probably is more reliable than the Kershaw Launch Series. But, hey, I can't really say that because I haven't used them. So, and I haven't really hard used this one, so this is kind of just an overview. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it as far as the design goes. Little pivot screw right there looks kind of cool. It's got like a little design on it. I think it says Kalashnikov. It also says it on the handle. And I think these are made in Taiwan. So let's do some quick size comparisons. All right, here it is next to a uh, CQC 4K. This is the Black Wash Edition that comes with a tactical pin. Just reviewed this knife. Really, ni uh, really like this knife, and I think it's very comparable to the Boger Kalashnikov. Uh, in size and in spear point, you know, blade shapes. Though, I actually like this one a little bit more. You know, I just think it looks a little bit better. Like, everything about it, I like. It's, like, designed well. But, you know, they're... Both kind of uh, budget tactical knives, I'd definitely say. Though uh, a lot of people use these for EDC, and I think they work well for that. So let's put that right there in the middle. Uh, let's put it next to a... Most people have a full-size griptilian, or some type of griptilian. Uh, so put it next to that. And finally, we're going to put a paramilitary 2 at the end. So that's basically how, uh, let's try to get this lined up handle to handle. There's a lanyard hole on there, by the way, I forgot to tell you. 
I always forget it. Forget about the lanyard hole. <laughs> quick video. I mean, a quick test on how it will ride in the pocket. Uh, it'll ride about that deep. So you know, hides really well. I think I, I do like the look of this knife in the pocket. Quick cut test. Just cuts through a piece of paracord. You know, it seems to slice really well, even though it doesn't feel that sharp. So here's a really thick piece of uh, nylon, and there are little cardboard uh, strands running through that. I kind of wish they would have made the handles out of G10. It's kind of hard to get a grip on them because they're, you know, metal, so it's kind of really slippery. In comparison, here's a quick best slicer ever. <laughs> uh, Paramilitary 2 with these two straps of nylon. Shorter blade length on both these knives are prohibiting it just a little bit. All right, do a quick spine whack test. All right, so past that with no problems, uh, and that is a pretty tough uh, test. I did hit that pretty hard. Uh, if you hold the knife loosely, I noticed. It kind of does that little wobbling thing that you've been seeing. Or maybe it's just like the way it films, but if you hold the knife rather tightly, you know, it doesn't seem to do that. It's like a really rock solid lockup. And it does come out really fast and really smooth. So definitely a fun knife to play with. And it, where it really shines is its tactical capabilities. Uh, it does feel really good in reverse grip. Uh, I thought maybe that would be a hot spot because it's got like a little wrinkly, you know, look. And, uh, you know, with the ridges in it, but it doesn't really affect your grip. So do a quick test. So no damage to the blade. Uh, it's not bent or anything like that. Tiny, tiny bit of scuff mark right there. So maybe the coating holds up better than I expected. So that spear point penetrates really well. So all in all, the Boker Kalashnikov, a uh, great knife for the money, uh, definitely a great automatic knife for the money. I think it definitely has some tactical capabilities uh, if you needed it in a, an emergency situation. Uh, survived the spine whack test, stabs really well, so it could be used for self-defense. Uh, slices decently well, though, I don't know, something about the blade geometry seemed a little mm, finicky to me. And I just don't really like the aesthetics of the knife that much, like just the overall lines and, you know, design. So I'm probably going to be selling this one, but still I think it's a very great, reliable knife for the money, and it is a good value. So that is my review on the Boker Kalashnikov, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.